Welcome to worship. My name is Shannon White, and I'm the pastor here at Wilton Presbyterian Church. We're so glad that you've come to be with us on this day, on this day when we celebrate the Lord's Supper together. Whether you are visiting with us for the first time or you have been with us for a lifetime, we are so glad that you have come. As I have mentioned, this is a communion service, so if you want to gather the simple elements with you in your homes, that would be great, and you can use those at the appropriate time. Hear now these words as we prepare for worship. Echoing the voice of the prophet Isaiah, lift up your eyes and see. Have you not seen? Have you not heard? Our God greets us here. Open your ears to hear. Have you not seen, have you not heard, God meets us here. Let us worship God. prayer of confession, where we are invited to be authentic and fully human before God, knowing we are received by God's love and grace. Let us pray. God of mercy and grace, we are vulnerable people who sometimes ignore the vulnerable. We are broken people who don't always pay attention to the world's brokenness. Heal us, O God, and make us better healers. Mend our rifts that we might be better builders. Cleanse our hearts that we can clear out the damage of hurt and oppression. We are yours, loving God. Help us to live and to know this better. Amen. Have you not seen? Have you not heard? God lifts us up on eagles' wings. Strengthen us so we won't be weary. The burden of sin is far and a distant memory, for, though, for through Christ our sins, all of them, are forgiven. God is great in strength and mighty in power and full of endless love for us. So friends, believe the good news of the gospel in Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. Liz Archibald, one of our deacons, will bring us our scripture reading from the prophet Isaiah. And as you can, as you know from what I've alluded to, it is on eagle's wings, that, that text. So Liz. Please pray with me. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may hear your word with joy. Amen. Today's reading comes from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 21 through 31. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught, and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely they planted, scarcely sown, Scarcely their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them and they wither and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. 
Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. He is understanding. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of the Lord. If we've ever needed a scripture for a time like this, this perhaps is it. It comes from the lectionary, and once again, the lectionary shows up for us, even though these texts were arranged long ago. In this time and in this space, in this time when we have spent the last 11 months inundated by what some have called three deadly pandemics, COVID-19, a concentrated time of national racial reckoning, and severe economic uncertainty for many, not to mention the incredible political upheaval in our country. Don't we need to hear the soothing words? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. Unlike us, God does not faint or grow weary. God's understanding is unsearchable. Thankfully, God gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. And we are reminded of our humanity with these words. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. And then the crowning verses. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Oh, may that be so. Our souls need to hear and embrace those words, to cling to them because our very lives depend on them, don't they? People are tired. They're tired of being cooped up for this now 11 months. They're tired of having to take steps to ensure their safety. They're tired of not being able to go out to do whatever their hearts desire. They're tired of not being able to hug their grandchildren or travel to warm places. They're tired of not being able to comfortably sit at a restaurant and eat with friends in a big group of people or freely go to a Super Bowl party. And they're tired, we're tired, of not being able to worship together, to sing out and praise together as one, no matter how your voice sounds. We're tired of not being able to join together in our unison prayers and listen to the children say amazing things during our children's sermons. And I'm tired of not having a congregation to preach to, to have your energy off of which to feed. People are also tired of not having their voices heard, no matter where you stand on the political spectrum, and that their lives don't matter in this country. They're tired. People are tired of struggling financially and trying to figure out how they're going to make ends meet for their families. They're tired of experiencing death after death after death. How much more can we take? We're weary. This past Thursday, I was invited to moderate a discussion for a national conference of Presbyterian church educators on Zoom. And my conversation that I was facilitating was called Avoiding the Slippery Slope, How to Avoid Using Addictive Patterns as a Means of Coping in This Time of COVID. <laughs> in our weariness and exhaustion this year, many of us have reverted to coping mechanisms to keep from feeling traumatized. Perhaps we've gone to eating or drinking to excess, over-exercising or staying on the couch too much overdoing time on our electronic devices or 
watching the news nonstop like I do, overworking, gambling, or day trading, any kind of activity which has allowed us to numb out and to avoid feeling powerless. Addictive activities may at first make us feel a little bit more in control, but that feeling is only momentary. It's fleeting. And then the after effects come and may spiral us further into isolation or shame or destructive behavior. This text calls us back to our center, to God, who loves and cares for us. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God. Lift up your eyes and see. This is a call to refocus and refix our gaze on what is everlasting. The call to wait on the Lord, however, may feel impossible when you're in the midst of an avalanche of feelings or the overwhelming pull to do something which is not in your best interest. That's when we need to pull back and lean on everything that we've been taught along our spiritual journeys to stop and pray and meditate. Maybe go outside where your attention is drawn up to breathe in God's love, to practice self-compassion, embracing, accepting what we're all feeling is understandable because there's trauma everywhere. Only with acceptance can we then begin to choose a different action. Some may be at the point where they need to talk about the trauma they have faced. A trauma-informed therapist. That's good and helpful. We're not meant to travel this journey alone. And this time of COVID has been isolating. Reaching out to talk to someone who can help is a good thing to do. Maybe it's even just a friend. Many of you know that back in 2019, I, re I applied on behalf of our congregation and received a mental health ministry grant from our denomination. It was $8,600 that we got, and the first half of that was used for our day of recovery and wellness back in November of 2019. And then in January of 2020, we hosted the movie Angst here in our parish hall, which was again open to the community and invited in over 75 people to come in to, to hear about uh, that award-winning movie and then to have a panel of experts to respond. And we were able to provide hospitality. The Day of Recovery brought in 200 new people to our building. The second half of that money needed to be used as soon as possible or else we'd lose it. And so uh, we will be, one way we're gonna be using that is by training a group of 15 people in a program called Companioning. And that helps people to know how to walk side by side with another in ministry when they're hurting versus kind of like a one-upsmanship, like I have it and you don't, so I'm gonna give to you. It'll be a training on how to truly be present with each other versus that one-up relationship. And we'll run a second session of that as well. So if you're interested, please let me know if you'd like to be trained in that. It's a four hour online training and we will find funds to make a second group happen. And then several weeks ago, I hired a professional videographer um, from my news days and conducted two interviews on the topic of mental health. The first one is a personal story of someone who grew up in our congregation, a young woman, who struggled with mental health during her childhood and teen years before realizing her diagnosis and finding help. She's now helping others to do the same. And you can find that video on our Wilton Presbyterian Church YouTube link. The other, the other interview is on the topic of trauma. And I interviewed our own Linda Rost, who's an LCSW, who works with people, first responders particularly, but other people in the area of trauma. She is a trauma-informed therapist. And she says that while people may come in to talk to her about COVID during these days, more often than not, they will end up talking about some sort of childhood trauma, which has been triggered by feelings over this 11 months. 
And I've heard that too from a, an abundance of people, the deeper things from their childhoods, which have been buried through activity or whatever we've done in our lives, all of a sudden have come to the surface and need to be dealt with. This is a time of unearthing deep hurts and wounds from long ago, and maybe not so long ago, which we may have buried, and to seek healing. And that is why we need to be still. To look up, as the scripture lesson today says, and to allow ourselves to be renewed and transformed. We who have been faint and weary and exhausted, we will have our strength renewed. We shall mount up with wings like eagles, and we shall run and not be weary, walk and not faint. So open your eyes and wait on the Lord. Famed Trappist monk Thomas Merton once said, life is this simple. We are living in a world that is absolutely transparent and the divine is shining through it all the time. This is not just a story or a fable. It is true. Stop and wait on the Lord and see what unfolds. Amen. We'll now go into a time of prayer, prayers for of the people of the congregation and beyond in our world. And let us uh, keep in mind the Sisters of Notre Dame and our own Jan Galletly, who um, needs our prayers right now, and, and others in the congregation who are suffering, who feel isolated and alone, um, those who are getting the vaccination and those who still need testing, those who are on the front lines and those who are out there working on our behalf. Let us keep them all in our prayers. Forrest Close, one of our elders on session, will bring us the prayers. Prayers of the people. God of grace, you come into our midst with power and authority to liberate us from anything that keeps us from the fullness of life you desire for all of your children and for the earth itself. Open us to your presence, even if it means facing difficult circumstances that bind us and keep us from living more fully. Help us to trust that when we wait for you during the times when we feel weary and faint, that we are not wasting our time, but that you are at work renewing our strength to soar as if on eagle's wings. God of compassion, we continue to pray for those whose lives have been most adversely affected by a raging pandemic. We pray for healthcare workers who work on overcrowded COVID-19 units throughout the country. We pray for all those who are facilitating vaccinations, and we pray that you would comfort all who are weary from being sick or who have lost loved ones. Help us to be agents of your love and comfort for those upon whom pandemic challenges have weighed most heavily. Empower us to be agents of love and justice in our communities and world. Amen. I offer these words from the liturgy written by Reverend Marin Tiribasi. Come to this table because you want to celebrate. Care in illness, comfort in sorrow, healing beyond curing, peace in forgiveness, hope in times of fear or threat. Come to this table because you claim your abundance, as culture defines it or as your heart knows it. Come to this table because you've discovered your own generosity and need to start giving. Come to this table because you are willing to be welcomed, even when that is awkward, and willing to welcome to the limit of your resources, and even to offer welcome knowing it may be rejected. Come to this teeter-totter table where the bakers and the starving touch elbows and hearts. 
all are welcome. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord God we love. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We remember that Jesus Christ came from a culture of oasis hospitality. Stories of manna, grain gleaned, a raven feeding the prophet Elijah, Abigail hurrying to offer a feast, and a Passover meal for which everything stopped and all were fed. We remember that Jesus came from both family Sabbath evenings and the rule bending of grain plucked from a field when someone was hungry. We remember that Jesus remembered that on the first day in, heal in the healing business, he lifted up a woman from her fever, and she responded by serving everyone from the generosity of her wellness. Jesus sat and ate at that table. We remember that Jesus remembered that near the end of his ministry, he called a short man from a tree into a forgiveness so abundant, it became a meal for the least and the lost. Jesus sat and ate at that table too. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it with those who were closest to him. And he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, after supper, he took the cup and he said, this is the cup of the new covenant shed for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. For every time that you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he come again. Gentle host, rest upon us as you rested upon water and light, earth and creatures, human beings in all your image, and even the cooking pots and serving bowls of those who love you. Send your spirit of life and love and power and blessing upon your children that eat this bread that may be broken and gathered in love and this cup shared together. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we share this meal together from, the, from our homes scattered far and wide, Zach Wright will play On Eagle's Wings, which is the, the song that goes along with our scripture text this morning. Let us feed each other.
Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, thank you that you have fed us in body, mind, and spirit. Even though we are apart, connect us and let us know that we are never far from your touch. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. This week marks the end of the conclusion of our stewardship campaign. We've been hearing from a variety of voices across our, our denomination, I mean, excuse me, our congregation over these last weeks, and we're so grateful for their participation. This morning, we like, we'd like you to hear from Steve Connor, who is the chair of our personnel committee and who has been co-chair of our WebCo board. Steve? I'm Stephen Connor, and I've been a member of Wilton Presbyterian Church for 21 years, for which I'm extremely grateful. I currently head up the personnel committee. I'm co-president of WebCo, and I serve on the endowment committee. There are many reasons why I call WPC my church home and why I support it, and I'll briefly mention two. I consider WPC part of my extended family, and over the years I've made many great friends and had many memorable experiences. The one thing that continually amazes me is the love and support that we have for each other. When someone is in need, we can always count on our fellow members coming to the rescue. I can personally attest to this, as when I was battling cancer. Shannon had a community prayer vigil for me and many others in need. My family received many home cooked meals. People drove me to the hospital for treatments and many prayers were said on my behalf. In addition, I'm blessed for the Christian education that my children receive starting at a very young age and culminating with their high school graduation. WPC instilled a spirit of compassion and helping others in need, whether it was a trip to Nicaragua, the DC mission trip, midnight runs, or make, raking someone's lawn. I know these lessons will stay with my children for the rest of their lives. I'm a finance guy, and I can honestly say my investment in WPC has yielded returns far beyond my investment. I encourage you to think how WPC has touched your life and consider making a pledge, your financial pledge, to WPC to help our church continue to flourish and be a leader in the community. We need it now more than ever. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you, Steve. As we conclude this stewardship season, I want to thank the chair of our committee, Brian Campbell, for all of his work and for Jason Rice who assisted him. It's been a wonderful and fruitful campaign. You'll be hearing more from Brian about uh, the results of the campaign. If you haven't made your pledge yet, you can let our financial secretary, Mark Bohr, know of your pledge by going to the email stewardship.wpc at gmail.com. And we've gone to a new operating system now, which is up on our website, and you can give securely and freely uh, a one-time gift or a recurring gift by going to our website, wiltonpresbyterian.org, and going to the Give Now button, and you'll see the instructions there. So I thought I'd take a moment to tell you why I give. I give to WPC a portion of my salary because I think it's important to do so. I do it as a spiritual discipline. I do believe, and my husband believes, we give together, that everything we have is a gift from God. And in a gift, an act of love back to God, I give a portion of my earnings as a way to support the ministry of this church and to support the efforts of justice and love and compassion in the world. And so I hope that you will join me as I give and as we give, as my husband and I give, as we all join together in the supporting the ministry and worship of this church in 2021. So I thought we would take a moment to dedicate the pledges that have been given so far in this pledge drive. And so if you join me while we pray. 
O oh God, giver of all good gifts, we offer these gifts to you in return with gratitude for the gifts you have showered upon us, including the gift of our very lives. May they and we bear your peace, love, and justice into our community and our world. Amen. And now hear our benediction. May you be given the strength to walk when you are weary. May you feel the strength of being mounted up with eagles, with eagle's wings. And may you know that it is God who holds you in the very palm of God's hand. And may the blessing of God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer be with each and every one of us now and forevermore. Amen.